welcome to part 5 of our beginner's guide to windows server active directory and let's check what we have covered so far so we have covered what a directory service is all about we have seen the architecture of active directory we have seen the concept of single master operation in active directory and we have also seen the structure or the hierarchy of active directory so in this part 5 uh, we'll be taking a look at uh, flexible single master operation roles and we'll understand the scope of uh, each and every role and we'll just take a look at schema master fsm role just the one role will be covered in part number 5 so let's get in so let's recall so what exactly is a domain controller so any computer on which active directory database is present can be called as a domain controller so in other words any computer on which active directory domain services are installed and configured can be called as a domain controller so in this example over here we have a server named london hyphen dc01 and this server has active directory database on it so we can call this server as a domain controller because it hosts active directory database so let, let us see all the five fsm roles one by one then we'll dive into so each and every role so we have schema master we have domain naming master we have rid master we have infrastructure master and last but not the least we have the pdc emulator so these are the five so flexible single master operation roles so let us uh, see the scope of each and every role now so the term scope refers to the boundary of a particular role so there are two scopes defined in the world of fsmo one is forest scope also called as forest wide or the boundary is the active directory forest and another one is a domain scope that the boundary is domain so every domain will have that particular role so the scope of some roles are say forest wide and scope of some roles are domain wide so let's dive into it with an example over here so there are two scopes forest wide and domain wide so our schema master and domain naming master are forest wide roles and rid master infrastructure master and a pdc emulator these three roles are domain wide so let us understand what is forest wide and what is domain wide first then we'll dive into each and every role so say we have this particular forest contoso.com and we have three domains in this contoso.com forest east.contoso.com contoso.com and west.contoso.com and there are some domain controllers in every domain so we have two forest wide roles schema master and domain naming master so there will be only one say schema master for the entire forest and it can be on any domain controller in any domain it can be on east.contoso.com or it can be on say any domain controller in west.contoso.com or in contoso.com there is say uh, no hard and fast rule that it has to be on this particular domain controller that's the reason the single master operations are called as flexible single master operation roles so it's it depends on us the administrators that uh, in which domain the role should go into and same thing goes with our domain naming master as well there will be only one domain naming master per active directory forest and it which can be on 
any domain controller in any domain but it will be only one they won't be say more than one schema masters or domain naming masters in an active directory forest however we have three domain wide roles RID master infrastructure master and pdc emulator and these are domain wide roles means every domain will have these three roles so in our example over here we have east.contoso.com so this east.contoso.com domain will have one rid master one infrastructure master and one pdc emulator same thing goes with contoso.com and west.contoso.com so every domain will have its own rid master its own infrastructure master and its own pdc emulator so today we'll only discuss one of the forest wide rules that is schema master so when i started understanding uh, the schema master there, are, there were a lot of questions which came in my mind the first question which came in my mind was what is schema and the next question which popped up in my mind was who is a schema master which domain controller can be called as a schema master so these were the questions which came in my mind so let's try to answer these questions by getting into our say day-to-day -day life it's very close to our day-to-day -day life so to understand the to get the answers for these questions we uh, need to understand object and its attributes so if you see uh, we are surrounded by objects around us so i have just taken few objects over here a barrel a mug a bowl a cup so we are human beings we are surrounded by objects and most of the objects are created out of a template or a mold okay you will see for this particular barrel or a mug over here you will see a mold over there so through that mold we can create n number of similar objects and every object okay has a set of attributes every object has a set of attributes let's take an example of the plastic chair over here you can see the mold and the plastic chair so we can create a number of objects or plastic chairs using that particular mold and all the chairs which will be say created or manufactured by that particular mold will have same attributes so we are surrounded by objects every object or most of the objects are created out of a mold or a template and every object has a set of attributes or you can say properties so the same analogy can be applied in active directory the same thing is applied not can be it's applied in active directory active directory is also made up of objects everything in active directory is an object a user a printer a computer whatever it's an object and schema can be defined as templates or molds of objects which can be created in active directory so it's very simple schema is nothing but the templates or the molds okay, of objects which can be created in active directory the schema defines okay what kind of objects can be created in active directory so the schema is a blueprint of our active directory it defines what kind of objects can exist in active directory and all the attributes are also present in our active directory schema so this means that every object in active directory is derived out of schema because schema is the mold or the template so this is our active directory database which consists of objects an object can be a user a printer let's say a computer or a group of users it can be anything everything is an object in active directory 
this object is derived out of schema and schema contains classes and these classes have their own attributes. So let us focus on attributes a little bit. So in the world of Active Directory, some attributes are mandatory and some attributes are optional. Means if you want to create a user as an object user, a new user, there are some attributes which you have to provide. Otherwise, you won't be able to create a user object. Okay, for example, the, the, the login name is again a mandatory attribute and not every attribute is mandatory some attributes are mandatory attributes and some attributes are optional so it's somewhat like this this is how our active directory schema looks like inside our domain controller and here we have mandatory attributes for a username sandra jones so these attributes are mandatory see over here let's say cn if you see attribute and the value cn instance type, object category, object class, object said, some account name. These are mandatory attributes and you'll see a value next to all the mandatory attributes. And these are some of the say optional attribute. For example, account expires, account name history, audio, bad password time, bad password count. These are all optional attributes so they are not yet set so it's optional if you don't even give those attributes while creating an object an object will be created so let us understand what is a class and what are the attributes of a class so let's take an example of mr jones so the attributes can be say name his phone number qualification work experience, height, weight, passport number, so on and so forth. There can be a number of other attributes as well. Now, Mr. Jones is applying for a systems administrator position in an organization. Now, that organization don't require all the attributes. They only require his name, his phone number, qualification, work experience and date of birth. So we can say that uh, for that organization, for the position of systems administrator, these five attributes are mandatory for anyone to provide and rest all the attributes are optional. Now let us understand the concept of schema master. So as we know that there is only one schema master domain controller or there is only one domain controller which is designated as a schema master in the entire Active Directory forest. And the schema master is the only domain controller in the entire Active Directory forest who has read, write, copy of Active Directory schema. Only one. Let's say you have, say, 500 domain controllers in your entire forest. So only one domain controller will be designated as schema master and that domain controller will be schema master because that domain controller has a read write copy of active directory schema. Now rest all the domain controllers in the forest will have read only copy of active directory schema because for creating any object we will require the template so all the other domain controllers will have a copy of schema but it will be in the read only format there will be only one domain controller in the entire forest who will have the read and write copy of active directory schema so let's say let's take an example over here we have a forest with four domains contoso.com north.contoso.com west.contoso.com and south.contoso.com so your schema master can be this domain controller which is in red or it can be this one it can be any domain controller but it will be only one domain controller in the entire forest it, it can be in any domain there is no restriction it can be in any domain 
the concept is flexible it depends on us on which domain we should designate a domain controller as a schema master or it can be on this domain controller in south.contoso.com or it can be on contoso.com or it can be again on west.contoso.com so but remember there will be only one schema master in this entire contoso.com forest there will be no two do two domain controllers designated at schema master because it's a single master operation rule so let's take up the summary of today's session so we have understood the five rules all the five rules then we have also understood what is scope and scope of each and every role we have understood active directory object and its attributes and we have also understood what is active directory schema and who is a schema master so this is the end of part 5 hope you have enjoyed part 5 you have also understood what is schema and what is schema master and in our part 6 we'll be diving into the next FSM role that is domain naming master and thank you again for joining today's session and if you feel this channel is helping you to learn something new do share and subscribe this channel with your technical community and have a great day ahead bye bye